the beautiful thing is about Torah is that it's available for everybody. The Goyim understand that Torah is valuable, and that's why some of them want to convert. Other Goyim that uh, don't want to convert, but they want to pretend like they know the Torah, they pretend like they're half Jews. So right now we have a danger in many Jewish communities around the country. There was a danger in New York last year. Then it moved, the same danger moved to Chicago, which is Christians that pretend to be Jews, that they dress like Hasidim. They dress like Hasidim, they have the payas, they have the kisurosh, the skirt and everything, but they believe in their fake God. And uh, all they want to do is corner Jews to tell them that maybe uh, you want to believe in Yoshke, Yimach Shemov And then you have different Christian organizations opening up all over the United States, all over the world, directly across Yeshivot. You go to Brooklyn, there's certain places in Brooklyn, Yeshiva in Brooklyn, across the street from Brooklyn, across the street from them, they open a fake Yeshiva for Christians, but they look the same. They wear black and white, they wear black and white. They have pairs, they have pairs. Only difference is, these are Jews, these are idol worshippers. That's the only difference. The Christians are playing a much stronger game today than they did in the past. Because their number one mission in the world is to convert Jews to Christianity. So now the problem is that most Jews, you're going to tell them this, yeah, what's the difference to me? I'm not planning on converting to Christianity. What do I care? What do I care about these Christians want to come to uh, shul, kick them out? What's the difference? The problem is, is that the Christians are very good at speaking, much better than I am. And they know parts of the Bible that you probably don't. And if you're not well versed in the Torah, they could easily put something called a safik, a doubt, into your mind. And that safik can cause you to abandon everything. Now, even if it doesn't cause you to abandon everything, it'll weaken you. So the next time you do a mitzvah, you don't really want to. But even worse than that, if it creates a doubt in the adult generation, 40s, 50 years old, you could multiply that by a thousand of how much the damage is on the kids that are 15 years old and 16 years old that don't know anything. Now everybody, when I say Jews that don't know anything, people assume that I'm talking about people that don't keep Shabbat, don't keep mitzvot, never went to yeshiva. That's incorrect. I'm not talking about those people. Those people, we have to help them, bring them back to Am Yisrael, Bezat Hashem, to help them do tshuva. The people that I'm talking about don't know anything are people that actually go to yeshiva. Right now, we started a program about two months ago with uh, for teenagers. Kids, all types of kids, kids from yeshiva, kids from not yeshiva, from public school. We pay them $15 just to come learn Torah. Come learn Torah at least one hour with us. We started with two kids. Right now we have 70 kids in the group. I mean, and these kids, they're not coming for the money. Why? They're all driving $100,000 cars. The $15 just helps them with the yetzerah a little bit. But you have 70 kids. Coming to Shure Torah, coming to Shure Torah three times a week. On the average, we get about 40 at each time. 40 out of the 70 in the group come. I think that after these uh, tests they have in school are over, we're probably going to get even more than 70. Now, these kids, I thought that they're all coming from public school, so I figured that, you know, I have to give them everything brand new, like Ita Aleph, like, you know, first grade. But then I start seeing kids with the keyboard, with tzitziot, all types of kids. And they're asking the same questions. The one that went to public school and the one that went to yeshiva asking the same questions. This one doesn't know who Moshe Rabbeinu is and this one doesn't know who Moshe Rabbeinu is. So then I asked the kids from the yeshiva, wait a minute, what did you learn in yeshiva? He said, I learned how to pray. I said, do you know what you say when you're praying? He goes, no, I know how to say it though. I know how to speak, but I don't know what I'm saying. So what do you learn in yeshiva? He said, uh, we play basketball good. We have the best basketball team. I said, okay, you go to public school for that. Uh, what else you learn in yeshiva? He says, uh, pray. I said, you said pray already. What else you learn in yeshiva? They don't really know. I met a kid that went to yeshiva for 15 years. 15 years he went to yeshiva. And he's with a non-Jewish woman for three years. 
Now, you went to yeshiva for 15 years. You figure that the least, the least concern the parents should have is intermarriage. That's the least. Maybe he's not going to be Haredi. Maybe he's not going to be a rabbi. Maybe he's not going to be Gdolador. Maybe he's not even going to be a Chacham. But at the very least, he's not going to be with a Goya. Even that, we don't have a protection. Which means that right now, the Jews cannot even defend themselves. And part of the reason is because we don't know very much about Matan Torah. So if a Christian came to us today and told us and asked us, why do you believe in the Torah? Nine out of ten Jews will not know what to answer. And whatever answer they have is not going to be strong enough. And the reason is, is because when they say, well, we got it at Mount Sinai. So the Christian says, yeah, we believe that too. You got it at Mount Sinai. We believe you got it at Mount Sinai. Yeah, but we, uh, we got Shabbat. He says, okay, so we understand you got Shabbat. So what? What, what is that difference to you 3,000 years later? Eventually, the Jew runs out of answers, and he doesn't know why he's defending it. And if he doesn't know why he's defending it, his kid is watching him, and the kid says, you know what, made the, the Christian guy sounds like he's right. Right now, there's a Christian organization in Eretz Israel. In Eretz Israel, their number one, their number one target is kids. These two Rashaim Israelis, one is a Sephardi Israeli from, uh, from Tripoli, Shem Menachem, and the other guy is a Sam Ashkenazi guy. Both guys are native Israelis. They get literally millions and millions of dollars from the Christian church to convert Jews to Christianity. Now if you watch their videos, it looks like it's Hollywood. And the reason why is because they were trained by Hollywood producers. Now, for all of the people that like to follow politics and depend, you have a lot of reliance on Donald Trump. Some people even say Donald Trump, Gimatre Mashiach. Just so you know, Donald Trump says he loves Jews because people say, oh yeah, because his daughter converted to Christianity, uh, to, uh, to Judaism. She used to be Christian, she converted to Judaism. That's not the reason why Donald Trump likes Judaism. Most of the people around him are Jews. The problem is that most of those Jews are heretics. Most of those Jews are Christian missionaries. The most successful Christian missionaries in the world are Jews. Go look at his panel. Go look at the people that are around him. Go look at the people that put him in power. Go look at the people that donated the most amount of money to Donald Trump. were Jews. But they believe in Yoshke. So now that means that even us as people that are trying to keep Torah and mitzvot are in danger. In a danger that we've never seen before. Because in the old days, the Christians had only one method. You convert to Christianity or we kill you. At least they kill the body. Today, they don't try to kill anybody. Today, they just try to kill the soul. But they try to do it with a little bit of candy. Say, so listen, why don't you convert? We'll give you some money. We'll give you some nice videos. We'll buy you a house. We'll pay your bills. All types of things. The church spends over $300 million a year just in Eretz Israel. Just in Eretz Israel. We're not talking about America. America, it's billions. Forget the numbers. In Eretz Israel, $300 million a year to convert Jews to Christianity. And they're succeeding. Right now in Eretz Israel, you have about 1,000 Israelis converting to Christianity every week. Now, if we were Americans, 400 million people, 1,000 a week, who cares, 52,000 a year, big deal. If we were Chinese, 2 billion people, 52,000 a week, who cares? It's, not, it's a rounding error. But we don't have those kind of numbers. When you have 1,000 Israelis a week converting, you could only multiply that much worse in America. Ma? That's their mission in life. No, in their eyes you can. Once you convert, once the Jew says he believes in Yoshke, they've achieved their purpose in life. Yoshke, Yimach Shimo Vezicho. Yimach Shimo Vezicho. Yeshu. So now, so now. I'll answer that in a second. I'll, an I'll answer that in a second. So now, 
in America and in, in Canada, the numbers are much worse. An organization by name of by the name of Jews for Judaism, they fight these missionaries. They did an estimate, and they said over five hundred thousand, over five hundred thousand Jews have converted to Christianity in the last twenty years in America and in Canada. Five hundred thousand. You're talking about. Almost 5% of the total population of Am Yisrael. Now how come we don't hear about this in the news? Well, you do hear about it in the news if you're in the business. But if you're not in the business, you don't hear about it. Why? Because, unfortunately, many of the enablers, maybe of many of the people that help the Christian church do what they do indirectly are actually Jewish organizations that look like, just like me, that are rabbis just like me, that have a nice beard just like the goat, and have a suit in black and white, and they have a kippah, and they pray minyan, and they uh, put tefillin on a couple of times uh, you know, a day, they, put, they, uh, they pray, and they put tefillin, everything, they do everything the same. But they like Christian money. They love Christian money. And our Torah tells us that money will make even smart people stupid. So you have a very serious problem that the biggest Jewish organizations in the world today are getting millions and millions of dollars from the church. So now when you have the church just for tourism, spending $40 million a year in Israel, for, just for tourism, not counting everything else, and much of that money goes to different places. Now those places, they're not going to tell you, listen, we don't want them to come. Why? Because they figure, listen, we'll take the Christian money, we'll build yeshivot, we'll help homeless people, we'll help poor people, we'll help this, we'll help that. They try to rationalize things. You have APEC, Jewish Federation, these big organizations. Oh, Leman Israel, IDF. Look at the board of directors of, ID, of APEC. Look at the board of directors of Jewish Federation. Half of them are Christians. But not regular Christians that are just nice people, say hello, hello, goodbye. No, the biggest missionaries in the world, evangelical Christians. People think they are donating to Israel. It's a mistake. It's not a donation. It's an investment. It's an investment to go buy Jewish neshamot. Why? If I give your organization five, ten million dollars, guess what? I can walk in and out whenever I want. I own the place. If I give you $5 million for your little organization so you could build a building, you could do whatever you want, that means that as a Christian, I can walk in and out, I can do whatever I want, I can give little pamphlets to your Talmidim, I can take them on a tour, I can do anything I want. Why? Because I'm the gvir. I'm the rich guy that's funding this whole organization. And now, Rabotai, we have a danger that we've never seen before. Now, the only way out of this danger, the only way, is if we know our Torah better than they know our Torah. 